Throughout the course, we have seen output being printed to the command line by Gatling whenever we run our scripts, but we haven't explored that output in depth. In this video, we will have a look at the output that gets generated whilst the test is running and the summary output that is produced at the end. Let's start by running a test from the command line. Browse to your project folder and launch any of your scripts. I'll launch the video game full test script here with Gradle W Gatling run hyphen final simulation dot video game full test. The test starts up. We can see that Gatling prints to the console every five seconds. It shows the time elapsed since the test started, the name of the test and the timestamp, the number of waiting, active, done virtual users, the transaction names of the requests that have been made, and whether they passed OK or failed. KO. If the script runs into any errors, it also prints the details and the number of errors here. Once the Gatling test finishes, it prints out some additional information on the test run, focused around the response times of the transactions. We can see a breakdown of the min, max, mean response times and the standard deviation, as well as a few response time percentiles. Response time percentile means the percentage of response times that completed within the specified time. We also see a breakdown of the response time distribution and again a summary of any errors encountered in the test. This information is useful for getting a quick recap of how the test run went, but Gatling also produces a more meaningful graphical report from each test execution. We will look at that in the next video. Whenever a Gatling load test completes, Gatling will generate a graphical results report with a breakdown of the test. In this video, we will have a look for a report. We can find the location of the report by looking at the message that gets output on the console at the end of the test execution. Here we can see our report is in this folder. I'll open up that folder and open the index.html file to view the report. Let's talk about each section in turn. Indicators shows the total number of requests broken down by a response time of less than 800 milliseconds between 800 milliseconds to 1200 milliseconds greater than 1200 milliseconds and failed. It's also shown in a pie chart. Number of requests is a pie chart that shows the different type of requests made and which ones failed. Statistics gives a breakdown of the different transactions, whether they passed or failed, the requests per second, and various response time metrics such as min, max, mean and percentile. Errors shows the details and count of any error identified in the test. Scrolling down the page, we also have graphs showing the active users during the simulation response time distribution, response time percentiles over time, requests per second and responses per second. If we switch to the details tab, we can see this detail broken down for each of the transactions within our script. The Gatling test report is a useful file to share with your colleagues and project stakeholders, containing plenty of useful information on response times, transactions passed, failed and errors. Of course, it doesn't contain any information about the performance of the back-end system metrics where the application runs, i.e. the CPU used, the memory consumed, etc. Gatling doesn't have any visibility of these metrics. This sort of performance monitoring is provided by specialised infrastructure monitoring applications.